Good evening and welcome to the Boise State Esports Arena tonight. You're joining us for our Boise State Arcade Challenge. A, section of, a selection of daring players will battle their way through a gauntlet of games to see who is the overall arcade champion. And to call the action for you tonight, I am Jacob Palmer, joined by Audrey Norris. And tonight, we've got a special kind of arcade challenge because all of the games will be won by one company, that company being Namco. The Creators of Pac-Man. Oh, yeah. They have a lot of interesting games. I'm sure we'll see plenty that people have heard, and then some of the gem, maybe hidden gems that we've never sure. seen before, because you never know. I think the funniest thing about arcade games is just there are way more than you think there are. Yeah, like, everyone's there like, Pac-Man. And you know, like they're like, oh, yeah, Pac-Man, Galaga. And then it's like, no, 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 no. There, there's mm. so many. Yeah, Dig Dug, Pole Position. Uh, have, have you ever heard of Sky Kid or Alien Sector? I mean, Namco's been behind a lot of games you might not recognize. And it's kind of nice because we'll have kind of a mix of the obscure and the very well-known. And all the arcade challenges up to this point have been kind of completely obscure games that a lot of people didn't know about. Now we're, we're kind of mixing it with the well-knowns that everyone should have some skill at. You know, everyone should be, a, you, you'd think they could clear the first maze on Pac-Man, but it surprises me how many don't. Yeah, you know, it was something I always struggled with until I started doing stuff with my brother. Well, how it is going to be structured? Well, we will go through a selection of games. We'll spin a wheel to decide what games we will play, and then we'll add up the scores throughout the night. And one good thing about all of these games being from a similar company in Namco is that all the points are structured pretty similarly. So it's not like we're going to have one game that's like the golden snitch of the night where whoever wins that game is going to win the entire thing. It is all the scores are going to be pretty even throughout the games. And of course, what are we playing for? Well, you're playing for just good old-fashioned bragging rights. And how do you get those bragging rights? Well, you follow Doc's Keys to the Game in arcade games. And those for tonight are going to be to, of course, taunt and create mistakes for your opponents. Never admit your weakness. 80s hair helps. And, of course, have fun. It's all brought to us by Dropping Gaming, the premier online platform for gamers who seek competition, play your favorite games to win cash and prizes through free and paid entry matches and tournaments. Whether you are new to the scene or a seasoned veteran, Dropping Gaming has the right games and competition for you. And just to decide, show who will be going over the Arcade Challenge tonight, we will have three people, including Coach Moore, a familiar sight in terms of Arcade. He has gotten in a lot of kind of rivalries and see who will get the high score. Tapper was one that he and uh, da, uh, one of our staff members, Dallin, was really playing for a whole time, you know, just trying to see who would get the high score. So maybe we can start some new rivalries tonight with these games we'll play. Oh, yeah, I remember Dallin arguing for Tapper her to come back for a little bit but who knows maybe these uh three players tonight will be able to create some new uh challenges for everyone else in the staff and production room and maybe even the players that we've got hanging out we never you never know because some of these games are pretty good for that i mean we could always have a good pac-man rivalry going or yeah. even mappy i do like i do like just in terms of the overall theming tonight we've got the 80s 90s aesthetic going with our t-shirts we've got <laughs> gen one pokemon <laughs> and blockbuster here like we're bringing the full retro as Aesthetic. We're, we can we're prepared. We are prepared. And let's spin the first wheel to see what the first game the players are going to have to prepare for. Some well-knowns and some more hidden gems. It is, in fact, going to be Mappy. You describe that. And this is a very interesting, unique oh, game. Oh, this one is weird. But I, I like playing it. It's just kind of weird. It's pretty simple, though, your goal. You know, you're just, you're just a little mouse police officer, and your job is to avoid... S stop literal yeah. cat burglars. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, the pun. Yeah, literally. But literal you can't let them touch you, though, because no. if you do, you lose your life. So you got to get can't. all of the artifacts back before they touch you. And you have no means of really attacking. The most you can do is that there are doors spread out through the entire stage, and that's the only thing your button is good for, to open the door. And if you time oh, it right, yeah. you can, like, slam the door in someone's face, or there are special doors that send out sound waves. But yeah, you can only move left and right and then you're invulnerable when you're on the trampolines oh yeah so the trampolines are your best friend they I are remember your best friend i was playing it i think my friend had like one of the little consoles where it has like five of the games sure. i remember i played it just sit on the trampoline for yeah. like a good five like a minute waiting like mm -hmm. just until it broke and then 
I moved on because yep. just those those cat burglars will the biggest danger with them is that they can sometimes uh, like lock you into one of those hallways and if you can't get past them then that's it you're done and you got yeah, to you go re- on to your next life if you have any left. You got to really make sure that like the whole hallway is clear going forward to be able to be confident in your moves. Here we go the aforementioned house where the burglary is taking place. We are in hot pursuit and off we go. You only get to jump on those trampolines a certain amount of time, and you got to collect all of the fabulous 80s electronics in front of you. Have to board that. Need to open the door. Just barely gets by it, and we're off to a good start. Activates one of the sound wave doors, like we were talking about earlier, able to push their aggressor back, but unfortunately gets hit going back where they came from there. Now, the trampolines are going to send you up as far as you want. You just got a time when you press left and right on your control pad, and yeah, you can wait until the trampoline sends you higher, so you can choose what level you want to get off at, so to speak. I'm going to wait and pick up the safe, but has to go back because of the cat burglar. He's to open that door. Uh Uh-oh, gets locked in. And it's now we have our first player, Joanny, down to her last life already. Yeah, with plenty of artifacts above her, too. Little 80s-themed items that she's got to go pick up. Knocks down one of them, allowing her to get past it. That was a nice play there. Do you see the Mona Lisa? Mona Lisa as well as the... Oh! Probably should have waited a few seconds there for the door slam, and that's going to do it. 25-40, the first score for Joanny. As we talked about, this is one of those weird ones, and I think when you haven't played it before, you definitely got to warm up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Those trampolines can confuse you, especially if you don't pay attention to the little cutscene at the beginning where it warns you you yeah. can only do that so many times. I made that mistake before. And you got to really get into the thing of like timing the doors out well. And oh, yeah. I got to say, the colorful doors, the ones flashing multicolored, those are those are really good because those send oh, out yeah. sound waves. That My favorite thing to do with those is to get like a conga line of like sure. as many of them as I can and then hit the door because then I know that I'll knock out as many as possible and you can just go to town on every level hopping to get as many of those things before they get back back up because that is the hardest thing is you do have to watch and sometimes you'll think it's safe yep. and then like as we saw you'll you'll get on the little platform and then it's too late all righty up next is going to be alex moore or coach moore as he is known head coach of valorant and halo see how well he does on running through hallways i'm sure valorant and halo does have running in them so he should have at least some experience and here we go he's got to get there before the count does he he falters right at the very beginning, hesitating, and pays for it. You know, one of the nice things about this game if, is if you start going for the trampoline, even if you're not fully on it, the game does give you a little bit of grace time. Yep. So you just have to be quick about it. All right, it's going to uh, open the door and gets the push off. It's going to pick up 200 for that. But the cat burglar is going to sneak up on him. And already off to a pretty rough start for two players. Solid opening for him with no cat burglars in sight as one of them gets knocked out by the door because sometimes that'll just happen. He's able to bounce up there. Oh no, trying to risky avoid play. Them, yeah, he's not uh... able to get down. The fall of Coach Moore as he only gets 870. The AI is not nice in this game. No, it isn't. Well, this is the part where we hope our third contestant, Lucas Hill, has really been watching closely and listening to our advice in the control room. Oh, we Because this, so. this is the advantage you get from going third, is you kind of get to see how the game works out and what are mm-hmm. the strategies and weaknesses. Yeah, so hopefully he'll be able to uh, step up and maybe get through a few more artifacts. Let's see if he can make sure he doesn't lose his life immediately as well. That'll be... Pretty important to getting up there. I think another thing that's just really hard about this game is, of course, just timing, as we keep talking about, and that's something we keep seeing repeated. So, has a very easy TV right up there, and another one as well. Except the computer immediately goes for the TV. I can already tell he is coming here to play. Grabs the Mona Lisa and takes advantage of the trampoline immortality. Now the flashing one is worth more. He's going to get double for that. Ooh, brave soul jumping on, oh, but unfortunately wee! turns back and gets knocked out. But that's a very solid first start for him. I think he already has more points than the other two. Yeah, he's got half. Uh, Joe got uh, 25.40. Oh, so, so he's, he's a close. little ways off. I think there's four items left for him. To five items left. Oh. He's going to get... 
Well, you can pretend that didn't happen. Just go for the doors. Yep, you can open those doors. That's something that is normally a feature of doors. You can open and walk through them. He's also got the flashing doors, which you can open as well. It's for a second before going across the map. Solid strategy if you want to keep them away from Gets you. Gets the safe worth 500. He's now in the lead. Doesn't quite like the look. Just open the door! But... I guess sometimes opening a door is just too much of a challenge for someone to rise up to. <laughs> 2930. So, overall, a uh, pretty disappointing showing here, I guess. I guess opening doors and walking forward was just too much to ask for these three players. You know, Mappy is one of those weird ones that challenges players to do things that they wouldn't normally do in video games, but mm -hmm. in real life. And that can cause sometimes, you know, a little bit of a disconnect. And it's, that's okay. It's the generation today. There's, they're too used to those opening doors automatically. And that just shows <laughs> everything that's wrong with this country right now. <laughs> I remember when doorknobs used to mean something. <laughs> anyway, that does it for our first game. We can see the scores that each player has. Lucas currently holds a narrow lead with 2,930 points. Joanny nipping in second place at 2540 and Coach Moore at a distant third with his 870. So now that we can take uh, Mappy off the wheel and go on to the next game, maybe these players are going to get something a little bit more intuitive. Maybe yeah. a Pac-Man or a Galaga to try to just get back their confidence a little. Yeah, Galaga is kind of scary, though. Like, I, I know how to play that game, and it can still be kind of hard, because just, like, whenever the ships come all the way down and spin, that right. that can be annoying. But, you know, Pac-Man would be a good one. I like watching people play Pac-Man. That If someone is good at it, it's very enjoyable to watch. So. Well, let's spin the wheel and see what we get next. Next game is, in fact, going to be Sky Kid. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting selection. It's kind of a, a side-scrolling shmup where you can uh, kind of go wherever you want. You can choose to head up into the air or try to get some targets onto the ground. It's, uh, it's, it's also very challenging. I think that is a key thing that we're going to see throughout yeah. all of these games. It's like they're a lot harder than they That's look. the thing about arcade games because, you know, when they were created, it was at the very beginning of the gaming industry. And so the idea of balancing a game to fit all areas of skill was not very well no. like created and very well understood. So people would just be like, I don't know, I, I made a game where you run around in a maze getting chased by ghosts. That can't be too hard. Right. And that one's one of the easier ones. Yeah, but it is one of the easier there's ones. Still, like, it's still more complicated than people realize, especially because the joysticks aren't as responsive as what people using modern day controllers are used to. Sure, it, that, that's one of the kind of the greatest killers that can be in for arcade games too, is if that joystick is responsive enough or not. If you get one that doesn't respond kind of in that split second thing, then some of the games can be really hard to play, especially platformers. Oh, yeah. And Pac-Man also is one of those that can be affected by irresponsive controls. But now we move on to Sky Kid, and this is kind of themed to World War One, as you know, you're in kind of one of those classic biplanes trying to shoot everyone out of the sky and so forth. Yeah, before what I like, I knew what this game was about, and you just told me the name of the game. It gave me like Lava Boy, like Lava Girl and Shark Boy <laughs> energy. This is, like, this am is I so wrong? far from that? Like the, oh, the name some... though was all I thought. At all first. right, here we go. And as you can see, pretty self-explanatory. You got your little biplane, and you got a shoot people out of the air, match the button, and he is able to recover from that one. We that is one. Time events in this one. Yeah, that is one thing that's nice. If you get hit out of the air, if you mash the fire button, you have a chance of recovering. He didn't grab the bomb, though, and that's a little bit problematic for him. He's going to pick up a few points and then try to land safely. Oh. Is he able to... Oh. He overshoots it, and they yeah. are cheering his demise. <laughs> <laughs> he crashed! He crashed! Yay! <laughs> All right, mission number two. Let's go for the battleship. All right, beautiful takeoff. It's very intuitive flying. I love watching it. That is another kind of move you can do in air dodge. He's going to oh. wait. Oh. Oh. What's behind him? Oh, no. Oh. He's going to have to take one out. Ooh. He's still struggling, but he still has one life left. Actually, two left. Okay, moves up. That is one of the dangers of side scrollers, is being too close to the edge can get oh, yeah. in the way of an enemy there, like what happened now. Screen crunch is your worst. It's the worst thing that can happen to you. Barely dodges there. Can he recover? Nope, he can't. 
That's going to do it for him in Sky Kid 1990. So uh, ne none of the players so far have really uh, broken out towards a huge lead at all. Yeah, the, it, not yet, which, you know, kind of good. Kind of shows that we've got an even playing field for people to show off their skills and kind of figure out what's going on. But it does seem like we've also been going into those games where people just <laughs> don't really know what they do <laughs> yet. True. So it will be interesting to see if maybe we get to one of the more well-known games. Yes. We do start seeing that difference there. So far for this Namco night, we, we've gone to the more obscure games that, that exist that people don't really know how to deal with. Joe is going to be the next player stepping up to bat this time not going first so he's had kind of the opportunity to see how this game works it's <laughs> say on the tiptoes to reach reach the camera needs to take off in there I feel you go. that all right Ooh, hitting some of the guys on the ground there already getting yeah, up there some some, points there were some hefty points they're like worth 200 while the planes are worth 100 already to the half point now needs to pick up the bomb pick oh, <laughs> just barely <laughs> That's, the, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it took, the, took the instructions a little too literally. <laughs> all right. Well, these trucks already have put Joe in the lead. Oh, yeah. Just being able to hit a couple of the guys on the ground has been huge. All right. Okay. Now for the challenge. Get the bomb. Oh, oh misses it, but can still finish out the level. Oh, watch yeah, out. has to watch out for that one. That one can fire back at you. Okay, now just has to do... <gasps> you hit the grave and it starts dancing! There we... There Yay! you go! Gets the landing and now the cheers actually mean something. <laughs> and a one-up I think I saw there on the screen, so... All right, we're moving on to level two. No one's yet to fell the battleship. This one really seems to be kind of the difficulty spike because you got the planes moving behind you. So you kind of got to be cognizant of where that is. Tries to hit a few of them. Oh, oh recovers. recovers. Edging behind the little guys on screen. So she oh, they're trying to get away, but that just to oh, take a few. Nice. Ooh, they're changing up their patterns a little bit now and doing some of the air dodges as well, so you're going to have to be a lot more careful. Ooh. Ooh, that oh. is risky. Oh, oh, just barely. Now there's the bomb already. All right. There you hey. go. Now picks it up. Now it's the secondary button that drops that bomb. So the air oh, oh no. drops the bomb a bit too quickly. But already has gotten leaps and bounds ahead of our first player. We figured out how to pick up the bomb now. We're taking little steps here. Gotta walk before you can run. And it's already has the advantage of the checkpoint. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Sometimes, you know, sometimes the trees just have collision and sure, you don't know. Sure, sometimes you just, you're not sure. The, the fun of arcade games is that you don't really know what is safe and what isn't. I've found in so many games like that, you think, oh, you know, it's fine, they're trees. What could go wrong? And then something like that happens. And that's, that's the fun of arcade games. They don't explain themselves very well. So it's always a wonderful discovery to see what might happen next. Well, Joe actually got a pretty respectable amount of points. They're 5,200, so that's going to place Joe right into the lead. Lucas is going to be the third player, just like last time, getting consistent advantages. So if he doesn't finish first here, then there's going to be some real explaining to do. Let's see if he can pick up the bomb on the first level. We'll see. He's trying to go down, trying to get the angle, get a feel for it. All right. Solid couple hits on the trucks. Okay, there's the bomb. It's just waiting nice and easy. Yep, there he nice. goes. Nice. Okay, now the secondary button, the air dodge button, is how you drop it. Beautifully nice. placed. Picks up a whopping thousand. And Gives already one, one's life, and he's looking great. Picks up a huge amount of bonus points oh for actually gosh. dropping the bomb. Already into the tens of thousands. This might be where he gets to uh, kind of pick like pick off the other players now just because he was able to get that first bomb there. And if he manages to get the second one as well, though it will be a little bit harder because he does have to dodge all of these aerial helicopters as well. So far, he's doing a pretty good job. Oh, risky play there, but does manage to pull it off. He's playing with confidence right now. Oh, oh well, maybe a bit too much confidence. <laughs> <laughs> kind of goes a little too far oh, ahead. No! 
Still manages to recover twice. Watch out. Yeah, Don't he's, he's still playing risky. Oh, no. And he finally pays for it, got a little bit too confident. Now, the question is, is he going to get the advantage off of... Is he going to be able to... Yes, he did get to the checkpoint, so that's that's important. That'll make this part easier, as he'll be able to avoid some of these guys. Oh, no! Oh, that's going to make him... Ooh. Drop it. He was so close, too. It was just on the horizon. I know. Oh, and he has to... Wait, is that all the way back? No. No, no, no it's, it's not. Still I was about to say. It's like, okay, don't trick us now. Watch out for those trees, of course. And Set picks up. up the bomb. Now he's got to watch out for all of the aerial guys. Oh, Ooh. just oh, barely no. dodged. He's not going to be able to get the battleship. Oh, no. Gets thrown out of the air. And that does it. But he did manage to drop a bomb successfully, and that already oh. puts him up into the high scores. The game is just going to recognize him from getting past level one. I guess it's one of those hidden challenges that we get to find today where you never know. Maybe if someone else picks up Sky Kid, maybe that'll be the new one. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, believe me, we got nowhere to go but up. But here we <laughs> go. We're going to take a look at the scores. But before we do, we just want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors for our events here tonight. And that is the Idaho Army National Guard. Proud supporter of Boise State Sports. Top plays are presented by the Idaho Army National Guard, who invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. More than 10 jobs offering a $20,000 bonus and your degree of choice paid for. The Idaho Army National Guard is one of the best teams out there. Reach out to them on Twitch at iGuard Gaming. So now we move in to the third selection of the night, seeing if we will finally get into one of those really well-known games and maybe give our players here a bit chance to rack up the score. 14,680 gotten by Lucas. So that is very well played by him. It's actually yeah, 1480. We'll get the totals updated eventually. I think there might be a little bit of fishiness going on with Coach Moore there because the arithmetic doesn't add up for me there. But we'll get the, we'll get the totals for you once we do. Let's see what the third game is going to be. Bring back up the wheel. And which one do you want to see most now? Like I talked about earlier, I do really wa enjoy watching people play Pac-Man. And we did get to watch Mappy, and that one is one of my other favorites just for watching people try to figure out how to play it. So yeah. <laughs> now that we fulfilled that, I, I do kind of want to see Pac-Man come out. All it's right. It's classic. Let's see what the game selection is. The wheel is narrow narrowing down. And the next game is, in fact, going to be Tank Force. Okay. So this is kind of a, a, a top-down game. You're looking down from the top, and you can move the tank in one of four directions. It's like, remember we play? Remember the oh, tank battle one? Oh, yes. This is kind of like that. that yeah, one. yeah. If you've seen that, you've yeah. seen this. You know what? In fact, I really hope that our third player, Lucas Hull, does really well on this one because currently for one of our classes that he's recreating, we, we tanks. So he should be an expert, this hopefully, is, this is study. in this type he of gameplay. Play, right? You know, get a course credit already for this one. He is going to have to go first, though, so now he's in the guinea pig position. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that one goes, but uh, wh who knows? Now that he's in the front, he'll have to see how that goes now that he's not the uh, getting to get the benefit of watching everyone else play. Right. We'll also see how the scoring system is. Again, they're pretty consistent across all Namco games. Most things getting you 100 points there, 100 points there. So 1,000 bonus a or something. 1,000 bonus. Yeah. So it really kind of prioritizes finishing those levels to get the big bonuses. And we are just waiting for the game Tank Force to be chosen. I can see he's already, he's kind of going alphabetically through them. He's already to the S's, so the T is not far away. We're close, yeah, no. All but right, here we go. This is kind of one in a long line of tank games Namco has released. They released another game called Tank Battalion. This is Tank Force, kind of the sequel from 91. So we're into the 90s now in terms of overall gameplay. We get to enjoy some state-of-the-art 16-bit graphics. And we're ready to hop into the game right now. You can immediately see the difference in graphics, just like you were talking about. Alrighty, kind of has to 
plan ahead is going in the lower left corner right behind his face, and he's going to use that hiding for advantage. Oh. Nice turnaround and retreat to be able to effectively hit them there. Oh. He is oh, no. Warning might have thrown him off. There is a power-up available on the field, and those can be really good, but he moves into the wrong position. He's now he's already eaten through a few tanks. The power-up is waning. Man, just to pick it up. Oh, very close there. With another tank coming on screen, he's able to, ooh, get a, like, two collateral. right there. That's a collateral. 2,000 points? You know, I just like that kind of power-up. Just give me a lot of points. Whenever you see them in the arcades, you know that they're just trying to tantalize you into doing something silly, too. So you have to be careful, but he's able to get it without really a lot of problems and then clear the round right as he gets another power-up. All right, he has 8,400 moving in to round two. Let's see how he does as we kind of get a new stage to fight on and you can see this, you could play this game for the long haul. Lots of stages available. Yeah, and a lot of variety. This one has some water, which I'm sure you should not be trying to put your tank in. So it's probably another fun obstacle you can't actually destroy. Ooh, now that one looks bigger. Ooh. It looks, yeah, that oh, takes yep. multiple hits, but probably awards a few more points as well. Yeah, you got a thousand for that. Nice dodging there as he's able to take them out one by one. Better watch out, though, because it looks like more are going to be spawning in. There's a power up there. He's going to be careful, but he's able to pick it up. Is that an air Yeah, might be able to get oh. some air support. I like that power up right that there. That one's cool. That is a beaut. Still has more tanks. It seems like there's probably a set level of tanks that just Ooh. continually come in. That's gonna do it. We're gonna get his final score, 24,000. It's a lot of points for that, but it did make sense that there was just a lot going on there. And of course, there was those power-ups that were just points, which he picked up three of them. So yeah. nice, hefty extra to his score there. I think the, the I think the strategy is if you see an airplane, get it. Because oh, that's gonna yeah. clear out the whole field. <laughs> just go for the airplane. No, definitely. That seemed like, that one's a fun one, it looks like. A little less, like, thrown in your face immediately, a lot more just watching where you're going and making sure you don't go out too quickly and try and get around the tanks instead of mm -hmm. going head-on, except Lucas did do that a few times, but it did seem to work out as long as you were being careful. And it does seem like it's just one of those easier games to pick out. You got your f the four carnal directions, and mm -hmm. then you just got your fire button. And that's a lot easier to pick up than, am I supposed <laughs> to slam the door at the right time? Or, or <laughs> these trampolines confuse me. Here we go. We'll see how Coach Moore does as he heads into the battlefield. Now the breakable walls do add an interesting level to this, where if you're not paying attention and think you're safe, it could be your downfall just because a breakable wall was removed earlier. Kind of mess up your line of sights as well. He has a chance to just line, talk about lining them up. He's going to wait for the other one to come in, and then the third. Oh. Beautifully played. Nice shot behind him as there's two power-ups power right next to each other. Oh, he's going to get an upgrade to his firepower. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, those look like that's full-on missiles. Now he has just two more. <laughs> Trying to play a game of chicken with it, but overall wins it. Looks like the enemy tanks get faster. He's just trying to make the round end and put a bit of pressure, and he clears out with the same score. It looks like 8,400 is kind of the standard score to finish round one with. So it looks like there's a about a set total then of points that like your maximum mm -hmm. if you do everything correctly. So that's kind of interesting actually because that means if everyone's playing around the same level then they might come out with about the same amount of points. However, Coach Moore does oh. have the advantage right now. <laughs> he decides to go a little small actually in that power up, but it kind of gives him a bit more maneuverability. And sometimes it is a game of just pixels. Oh yeah. You, know, you just dodge it by a few pixels. 3,000 points on the field, picks that up. Oh, and I see the airplane. Oh, there it is, it's in the bottom corner right there. A little bit harder to get to, and the problem is there's this tank guarding. There he picks it up. Clears them all out, gives them a whole bunch of points. Oh, and two cannons instead of one. 
Oh, now he's going to be able to pick up a lot more stuff. <laughs> oh, no. That's his first out, though, so that's good for him. Yeah, still can clear this out. His past where Lucas was, that was kind of dangerous, but manages to escape. Uh, something interesting that I've noticed, too, is those white blocks up there are actually immune to damage, so they kind of sure. create a little area where you can't... It actually protects the tanks, which is probably good, because you could definitely just sit below where they spawn otherwise and break the walls and then just completely snipe them. Coach Moore is opening up a very huge play. He's gotten up to 2,400, which actually means Lucas was right at the end there. Oh, 24, he was really close. Yeah, yeah you're right. So this is all now Coach Moore just can run up his lead. And he needs it because his past few games haven't been the best scoring-wise. So here's his great chance at getting an equalizer. Yeah, oh. Did the bullets cancel out there? L looks like it, but that one sure didn't cancel out. Still has a thousand points on the field, picks that up, gets the small tank power up, is now speedier. Oh. <laughs> okay, I like that. I like how the game isn't completely heartless. Like, I'm gonna spawn one right out of the corner. That would be horrible, man. It's like the worst feeling in arcade games is when you don't realize that something's gonna spawn somewhere and then it yeah. is your downfall. But luckily, the game decided to be nice as he's able to just kind of, he's just kind of mopping them up right now. They're not too bunched up in a way that makes it dangerous, and he got another power up, so he's able to just kind of, just make his way along the edge right now, catching them when they're kind of stuck on the terrain. Another thousand points up for grab. Picks up two. Is going to move in to get the t power ups. There are no more tanks coming onto the field, which means these are probably the two finals. One of them's just kind of stuck in the middle there. Yeah, he just <laughs> mows down the building and picks it up, and now look at this, 35 Oh my gosh, this could be where he kind of runs away with it if... But he's got, he's got one life left, so he, he's, he's... Ooh. Oh, things have gotten serious. Oh, looks like a little bit of a, like, almost more like a boss kind of battle where you've got sure. to deal with... Ooh. I wonder if you have to destroy those in the back. We'll find out after he gets rid of the tanks, I guess. Oh, well, he's going to get a bit of defense, a nice shield, which is always nice. Yeah, I think this might be a battle against time of you just got to take out the tank targets before the, kind of the rail cars at the top get rid of all your shields. It's kind of Space Invaders-esque. Oh, yeah, no, oh, totally. Heads up, and you can actually see in the upper right corner, that's how many tanks are left in the spawn. Oh. So he had three left, but that's the end to his journey. But still, what a rally for him. 42,400 points. That is a huge increase of points for him there. And so as long as Joanny doesn't come in and completely show him up there in that final area, that's definitely going to be helping him out. Well, has the definite advantage of seeing all these stages beforehand and also realizing now that... Um, also realizing that you can kind of see in the upper right how many tanks are left, so you can plan accordingly. That'll definitely help, yeah, so that way you know exactly how many are coming for you after each time and whether or not you should be a little more reckless or not. Mm -hmm. And this kind of the best example of a, a good arcade game. Easy to grasp, but really hard to master. I mean, you saw how many levels were available in this particular game. Yeah, you can only imagine how difficult or just intricate they would have gotten over time there. All right, back to level one for Joe. Ready to head in. Already picks up the first tank. Nice shot there, just as the tank is about to reach safety, but gets sniped from far away by another one. Oh, oh. that was unfortunate. And actually, I think it's like a protect the base kind of thing. <laughs> they got to the base and blew it up, which means only 800 for Joe. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Our force finally received a crushing blow. Oh, what a cr send in reinforcements as soon as possible. There are no reinforcements. We are done in terms of tank force. <laughs> And as we were talking about, difficult to master. We didn't even know that was part of the <laughs> game until the know. last player. <laughs> Joe was watching the two other players as well. Oh, no.
You know, that's that's the one thing. I love arcade games, but it can be really frustrating to just sure. have a suddenly new mechanic that you didn't even yeah. think was there. Just, just go, surprise, so that's, that's you're what, over. That's what the warning was this whole time. There's like a base you oh, got to defend. Oh, you're right. Maybe that was what was going on. But that would explain some things, that's that for sure. That would explain. But they were the, that means the other two players were just tanking out tanks so fast that it wasn't even that much of a factor. <laughs> Oh, uh, we love the games that you don't All really right. Like. Well, we'll give the players some time to recover after that and be back with some more Namco games. See who overall gets the grand championship right after this. We're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day. We're going to save families from disaster and feed those left in the cold. We invite you to join us. The next greatest generation is now. Growing up in Riggins, we have certain rules we live by. Look both ways before crossing the street. Fishing stories get better the more you tell them. Small town life makes your life anything but small. Never work alone when you go hunting. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Protecting your customer journey from fraud is critical. According to industry analysts, Count's AI-driven platform is the leading solution. From account login to digital payments, Count is recognized for both its customer impact and technology excellence. Learn more at count.com. Welcome back to the Boise State Esports Arena. You're currently joining us for our Arcade Classic Showdown, in which we have three staff members of Boise State Esports duke it out in a bunch of classic arcade games to see who is the overall quarter champion. My name is Jacob Palmer, still joined by Audrey Norris calling all the action. Tonight, we are seeing Namco games exclusively, so our now known games like Galaga and Pac-Man, but so far, we've kind of played the more obscure, lesser known ones. Oh yeah, no, we've been playing Playing a lot of just random stuff like Sky Kid, Mappy, which you, you everyone's I think seen it if they've gone to an arcade yeah, or seen a lot of arcade games, but I don't think people have played it. It's the one in the back in the corner, and you're not quite sure. You just never get around to playing. Yeah, you it. see the art of the mouse chasing the cats, and then that's that's all you know. That's that was my experience for a <laughs> while going to like Grinkers or other sure. arcade places, and I'd be like, oh yep, there there it is, and then I didn't play it. It exists. For, like, well, here, here we see the dramatic turnaround that was brought on by Tank Force. Coach Moore just ran away with it with 42,000 points, erasing 
his other two rounds. Lucas Hall is still in it with 38,000. And Joanne could could have her game. You know, she could find the one that's a tank force for her as well. So She was doing pretty good beforehand. If I remember correctly, she was either second or in the lead right. after Sky Force. It but, no, that just wasn't her game. The the hidden mechanic yeah, that we didn't, know about <laughs> we didn't know was of. her downfall. Someone had to be the guinea pig in that regard. All right, let's see what the next round is going to be. We're moving into round four. And as we spin the wheel, we still haven't seen Pac-Man. Are we going to see it right now? No, oh, it is going to be Dig so Dug close. instead. It was close. But now we move on to Dig Dug, which is a fairly well-known Namco game. Everyone should have played this one at least once. Oh, yeah. Dig Dug is one of those fun games where I think everyone knows how to play it, but maybe you don't always pay attention to what's actually going on. Sure. And it always just ha it kind of just has some of the <laughs> the catchiest music as well. Oh, I mean, yeah. even though it's very simple, it's just having it having it tied to you moving. You just want to keep moving. Oh yeah, you got to move around a lot in Dig Dug. And, and of course, you have the you have the mechanic of the last enemy tries to get away from you. When you're down for one, it tries to move back up to the surface and get away. So that's your one opportunity to kind of get a few more points. Oh yeah, you got to make sure you stop it before it uh, takes your points away. So maybe we'll see if anyone manages to uh, keep it going or if it's going to get a, right out of their grasp. Well, I have a good feeling about this one. I think. This game is well known enough that all of these players should have a basic understanding of how to play it, and uh, we'll have no surprises, which is a good <laughs> thing because the last three games have had a lot of surprises. Just a lot of stuff of like, how do I pick up the bomb? How do I dodge? <laughs> Don't stand right next to the edge of the screen because it's just a 50-50 on whether or not the game is nice enough to give you iframes when something That's spawns true. there. <laughs> all right, we're moving into Dead Duck. Coach Moore is up first. He's going to be the guinea pig. And here we go. Four enemies, only one dragon to take care of. So pretty darn easy. Going to move to try to get to his first. Going to pick up the dragon first. I like that strategy, just getting that out of the way. Oh, one of them's moving, though, so he's going to have to be careful not to get trapped by it. He does a solid attack, inflating it before it can do anything else. Mm, that's oh. a nasty situation. Oh, he's going to try to lure them both in. Oh! Oh! oh, no, he got too greedy. This is not I, one of those games that's was, nice to you. I was half thinking he was going to go for the boulder off to the right. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's not going to risk it here. Now he can, just has the one left that's trying to get away. Oh, there it goes. All right, just has to go. And is he even going to try to hunt it down? Oh, he's but so close, but unfortunately. But he does move on to the next level. There are two dragons now. Gets one. Nice quick succession there on getting the little guys there. Picks up one of the dragons. Now you can just focus on the remaining easy one. Oh, the dragon is moving now. It's going to try to get away. Yeah. But manages to get it, and that's a perfect round two. Yeah. Now all he has to do is just try and get through as many of these as he can with his lives intact, though one of them is trying to move towards him, but he's able to catch it before it can do anything. Oh. Plan this oh. out. Already plans ahead. Tries to go for the boulder, times it right, and gets a cool thousand for that. And now here come the dragons, but he's able to create a nice little pathway there so they can't get to him. As that one is now trying to run away. Ooh, it's playing dirty and just floating to the edge of the screen there. Oh, Will he be able to get it? it? Oh. Picks? No, it just gets away. But he still has a healthy life count. Has one extra. Goes for the dragon immediately. It's worth the 800. <laughs> <laughs> this had to break through. Oh, the dragon is moving now. As one of the guys is hanging out up top, that might not be... Oh, Ooh. nice play. Gets another thousand. Oh, and now... Clean... Another clean sweep. Yeah, this is one of those games where it has so few mechanics that it's, it's, it's pretty simple as long as you're paying attention. That's the hardest part, though is when the enemies just disappear off screen for a second, then you gotta watch where as they're going As soon as he's seen how much those boulders score, he he's liking that strategy. Oh, yeah. oh, oh! 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 It takes him out with the fire, he goes. 13,500, not too bad. Oh, gotta go for the dragon first now after what he did to him. Don't blame him there, they are pretty nasty. 
now those enemies are moving a lot faster because the game is telling him time is running out. Make your bow! Oh, he lives no. by the boulder and dies <laughs> by the boulder. The boulder gives and takes. It go. Oh, that is unfortunate. But he gets the highest score. I mean, I'm sure he's the first to play it, but you know, hey, in first place right now, let's not take this moment away from him. Yeah, so far so good. And he put up a huge showing for that, getting through multiple levels there. So it'll be both, you know, a blessing and a curse for him. He was able to get pretty far, but he also showed his opponents a lot of the levels too. So it might, hopefully, it'll help him, but it might put him at a disadvantage there. And more importantly, I think showed how much the boulders are worth. Oh, if you can yeah. Them. So maybe in the easier levels, when you have more time, more of a grace period, it could take that into account. Joanny's back up to the plate. Is looking to recover after a brutal last round of tank force. This is the one opportunity for her to get back in the lead. We'll see how it works out. Okay. After the first, playing this a bit tentatively, trying to time it out right. Oh. Goes for the first. And yeah, it does look to be trying to plan out. Oh. The oh, no, runs right into it. They have no mercy. You have to be really careful about those guys. So, a little bit of trivia. The actual name for the enemies right now that are still on the screen are Pukas. I did not know that, so we're learning something new. Oh! Well, just barely escapes. Now there's just one left and it's going to be oh, running away. There he goes. Joe actually get no, I don't think. But it's just gonna pick up a few points. Remember, you kinda get ten points for digging out new for digging out more territory. Which always helps. We were talking about the music earlier. Can we just appreciate how it stops playing when you stop moving? I know, it's it it gives you a sense like you've gotta keep moving no matter what. Yeah, there's something just satisfying about the quick or like the, the stop and start just a couple times in succession. Oh, the dragon is coming. Oh, oh looks nice. Smith landing this out, gets out of the way. Oh! oh! Picks up the thousand from the boulder, but at what cost is the real question. <laughs> oh, and now we know where he's going to be going. Oh, almost, oh, oh, and he's trying out. to run away. Try to juke her out a little bit there. Will she be able okay, to make just, it? Yeah, I just think so. Wait, just wait. Just wait. Yep. Oh, oh just barely gets it. All right, 4,700, and it's down to her last life. Ooh. Oh, it's, oh, oh my it gosh. It was her last <laughs> life. Oh, nice catch on the dragon there. Yeah, because he can kind of cheat it a little bit there. You don't have to go completely, open up the corridor completely. We're going to get the shot. He's taking advantage of that. Oh, the dragon is coming up. He's looking for... Perhaps his, his din dinner tonight, but... Whoa! Oh, no, that's going to do it. 59.40. <laughs> All righty. So not not quite as good as the 13,000 we show. I think Coach Moore is on a bit of a roll right now. That Yeah, the tank game, I think, was what started his... Uh, his climb back to the winner spot there, which he so far he's holding pretty comfortably now. A nice confident confidence boost, if you will. Oh yeah. All right, last player up is gonna be Lucas, who is still in you know prime position. He's only a thousand off from Coach Moore, so a few levels here, a few levels there, and he could get back in the lead. A few well placed boulders. Nice catch there. You got to be quick with the dragons. Back. It's a bit of a risky play. Actually, is going for both of them with the boulder. Oh. Has to get out of the way and manages to pick up one. That's going to be worth a cool thousand. Oh, and there goes the last enemy trying to run away, but he catches him before he can. Very nice start. Getting the first level out of the way. Managed to get a boulder. No. Oh, no. that's risky. I, I think 90 degree angles are your worst enemy in this game. You, oh. want, you, oh. you want long oh. sidelines, and you can see a bit of frustration. Does not make the same mistake twice, though, and is able to pick up the 
the pop there and got another one as well. Though he does have to be careful. One of them is coming up to try and oh, avenge his brethren. It's unsuccessful though. No, now he has to go the for dragon. the dragons. Oh, oh boy, he tries to get oh. through the wall. And now there's just one left. There it goes. And manages to finish that level out. But is a bit far behind in terms of score. And he'll have to be very careful with his life count there as well. Still hasn't surpassed Joe in the score she got. And he's down to the last life, most crucially. Is waiting to lure all oh, Unsuccessful. The yep, sometimes the motor doesn't oh. always work out. Sometimes oh. just fighting on the surface can really work out for you. He clears the, the round again. He's now up to 5980, level 4. What a brave soul there going for the above oh, and below. Oh, I like this! I oh. like that play 2500! That was a beautiful play there. And now he is almost about to break five digits. Oh. Has to be careful with how he approaches. As trying to play it. Yeah, I, I was just going to probably recommend just waiting at the top. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the level that Coach Moore got to. Oh, well, he's got to watch out. He's a lot more aggressive. Um, oh. Oh, tries oh. to get the motor on oh. and gets it! Another 2,500! Oh, here comes the dragon, though. Oh, no! Oh, it's a two-on-one! And that takes him out just shy of Coach Moore's 14,000. It was a good showing, though, for only having one life going into that area, though, and was able to get off two very nice double pops with those boulders there. So now we have five normal games and then one wager game where they can wager as many points as they want secretly. And whoever gets in first place gets their wager. The other two lose their wager. And I can, you can see that... Uh, Lucas and Alex are just within 10,000 points of each other. Joe Annie's still kind of struggling. Uh, that 800 really just put a huge dent in the momentum. She'll definitely want to pick up some a lot of points in this next round if she wants to be able to wager enough to be able to combat those two because sure. at this point, but unless they like bet like 30,000 points right now. True. She's not going to be really able to do a lot. Well, you know what the perfect game to make up this difference would be? Pac-Man. Because you can score into the tens of thousands easily in Pac-Man. Oh, yeah. As long as you're just paying attention, Pac-Man is a solid way to gain a lot of points. And everyone knows it. So you, it should everyone be... Everyone should know it should is the know. problem. Should know. That's true. All righty. Let's pull up the wheel and see what the next game is going to be. Okay, all players. Actually, we're just going right into the... Uh, we're going into the wager round. Looks like we're just going to call it right now and see what the players have wagered. All right, so I have... Do we want to say them on air, or do you just want to show them to me and write it? Yeah, no, yeah, so yeah. I'll show them to you. I've only got two of them right now, though, so I'm guessing someone's trying to look for me. Okay. Going to take a look. Okay. 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 That's what some we've got so far. Some interesting strats being brought out by some of our players. Oh, and then the final one, and of then course. The final. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, these are some interesting wagers, I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> some dreams are gonna be made tonight, and then someone's hopes are gonna be dashed. Is is all I'm gonna say about the wagers so far. So let's see what the final game is. Will we actually be able to close this out with the game Namco is known for, or are we actually gonna see Pac-Man brought out? It is <laughs> gonna be Pac-Man. Could it, it tried end to trick us there? Any other way, <laughs> we are gonna be going to the classic Pac-Man. I think that's a fitting way to end this. We finally get to see the good old Pac-Man. Man, and our arcade logo right here has had Pac-Man all true. alone. And this is the first time we're actually showing Pac-Man. I feel like this is like something we've been building up to slowly. We keep sure. talking about it. And it's final, final round. All righty. So.
Pac-Man, one game that has been played to death, literally to the physical limits of the game. People have gotten amazed. 256, I believe, the one that glitches out and the game literally can't continue. Uh, I don't think they'll get that far, <laughs> but... We would be here for a while if that happened, but... We would happened, be here for a while. It would be interesting, that's for sure. All right, so a few things to keep in mind about Pac-Man is corners can be your best friend, actually. We go from a game where corners are not your friend to a game where corners are. Oh, yeah. Because you get a little bit of a speed boost while going around corners. And so if the ghosts are in hot pursuit, that can be a great way to kind of get out of a sticky situation. Yeah. All right. I can hear the iconic sound effects starting up. Let's get into it and see how Coach Moore does in Pac-Man. Oh. Well, that's... That's disappointing. <laughs> Remember, each ghost having a different type of AI. Are you familiar with all the different AIs? Oh, there? it's been a while, but they do have their own behaviors, and some of them you have to be really careful with, because they all have their different levels of aggression and how they'll chase the players. So you've got to be very careful. So, in full disclosure, uh, Red, that is Blinky, just tries to go directly for Pac-Man. Pink, which is Pinky, will try to kind of ambush you, tries to kind of look ahead of where you are and tries to trap you in. Uh, Inky will try to trap you in between himself and Red. And then Clyde, the orange one, just kind of goes in random directions. Yeah, Clyde... Clyde's one of the fun ones, because he'll just be in the corner just chilling while the rest of them are like doing some ultimate pincer attack against you, and it's just really fun to watch. Plus, we, we all love the naming convention. You, know, you do have to be careful, though, because especially if you let Red get right behind you, because then that's when the other ones become very dangerous. Now, the fruit in the first few rounds isn't worth too much. Cherries are just worth 100, strawberry worth 200. Ooh. Once you get into always oh, unable to get to the power pellet, I could see a real opening here for the other players. Oh yeah, definitely. And I like this, clearing out the bottom, that's usually what I like to do when I start out because, uh, like I said, corners are your best friend. You don't normally want long hallways, although the corners that aren't your friend are the ones at, at, at the very end, the corners of each individual level of the power pellets are. Because those can kind of be the hardest, because you have very few options on where to actually travel. Yeah. I found that one of the most helpful things is if you are able to stagger your power pellets enough, because those are your lifeline. And as long as you keep yourself set up in a way where you're not going to be... Oh! I told you, pink looks out for where you're going. Oh, yeah. 68-70. Which, remember, only the player who finishes in first place is going to be awarded their wager. The rest A get their wager them. taken away from them. Which, depending on how you choose to bet, could be very rough. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Wasn't the worst showing. You know, at least we got pers past the first level, which I'd say, yeah. as long as you, you know, if you played Pac-Man before, that's all I expect of you. Get past the first level, at least, because it's one of those. But... It will be interesting to see how it goes forward because this could be where Joanny sure. is able to uh, get past them. We'll see. All right, we'll see how Joanny does. Going to start up the right straight away. Picks up the power pellet almost immediately. Go for the second, which is worth 400. Oh, hesitates and almost puts herself in a risky situation. Now I think this could be a big one. As the second lined up, it's just trying to go for the power pellets. Gets 400, not bad. You gotta be careful. Ooh. Able to dodge Pinky, but she's oh. looking, she's waiting. An ambush, and that's the situation Pinky always tries to put you in. Trapped between two. Now has just basically the the lower half of the maze to clear out. Cherry's available. Which, you know, it's not the biggest point amount, but, you know, considering how low Coach Moore scored, you know, 100 could be the difference. Ooh, be careful oh, here, though. Oh, no, just gets out. No, I almost thought Joe was going to escape. Should be able to get past the first stage. Yeah. When in doubt, follow Clyde, though, you know? <laughs> just follow He's the least likely to go after you, so just if you follow him, it's probably the best direction to go in normally. Okay, has managed to make it to level two, Strawberry. Oh, 
6870 was the score to be not gonna beat it this time that means we know for sure that Joe's wager is gonna fall and I think we can actually say now what the wager is now that we know Joe wagered all her points oh yes in all caps it was very very um, important to know that she did that <laughs> I don't know uh, but yeah no so with that we are now at zero mm -hmm. for Joe. Yeah, Joe has zero. What remains to be seen is if Lucas can beat kind of the very low bar that Coach Moore set. 68-70. That's one maze cleared, but not necessarily, you know, maybe, maybe one good if you manage to catch all four ghosts. Remember, if you do that, you've got north of 3,000 points in just one power pellet. Whoa, there comes red, though. There we go. This is it. This could be the moment. Already gets 400. The next is going to be worth eight. And actually hesitates at the last moment. That could be costly. Oh, got to be careful. Red is on the hunt now. And Pinky is joined situation. in. Is Clyde going to... Oh, <laughs> I think he took your advice of going after Clyde a bit too literally. You gotta be careful. I mean, Clyde is definitely a good direction to go in, but you don't want to follow him that closely. I do think when the pincer attacks come in, though, that's the one I'd pick, because he's the least likely to just turn around and betray you. So he's playing it a bit gingerly with the ghosts, too. Which is main thing, like, if I was in his position, I would go for the ghosts right now, because they're going to be your biggest point makers. Clears out the corner. I do like that. That's he isn't under that much pressure. Goes for clearing out the corner. Able to, oh, here she comes, though. Oh, oh, just barely now. He has them all in a line, so this is good. Now you just need to get to your last power pellet. It's right there, but Clyde could prove the answer. <laughs> okay, he picks that up. 68.70 on to level two. He's halfway there. Kind of waits to see if any of the ghosties decide to show up, and they do not. So he goes up to the top and just goes straight for Piggy. Going to the other side. Ooh, Red is hot on his tail, however. Really going for it. Oh, Clyde actually goes for the ambush. You hate it when that happens, when Clyde actually gets smart for a few seconds. <laughs> oh, man. He always just surprises you. Now, he, he is so close here. Just one good power pellet and he can make it. He's already got 400. Is he going to go for the third? I think he can make it. Does pick it up and is just nipping out the heels. 50 left. Gets another 200. And that is going to do it. Lucas has picked it up. Quickly bows out after that. And that is going to do it. I can also tell you now, Coach Moore wagered all of his points as well. Which so means we're at zero, zero, which means we don't even need to know what Lucas wagered because he won. The other two are at zero entirely, and Lucas walks away with the championship, clutching it in Pac-Man. Yeah, pa and as we said, Pac-Man, good old reliable, I guess, in that scenario. Except with Clyde a few times there, mm -hmm. he kind of showed us wrong. I. My advice was unfortunately not helpful to some people. <laughs> he just, again, he took it too literally. <laughs> just like just like Joe took the advice of pick up the bomb a little bit too literally. Oh uh, yeah. But no, overall, really good. I'm glad we got to see so many like just niche games that just no one knows about, right. especially right at the beginning. There's some good warm ups there. Right. You, you just have to wonder if if maybe they had known a little bit more about the mechanics of Mappy if they would have been able to. Yeah, Mappy is one of those where they could have run away with quite a few points if they had figured it out, but it is definitely a hard one to understand. So. All righty. Well, that should do it for us tonight. Lucas Hall getting the win in our Namco Night Arcade Challenge. Do you have any final thoughts? Just glad that we finally got to do some more arcade games. I always enjoy that. I think it's good to look back at where we came from with all of these are now shiny, fancy machines and good graphics. We we got to remember where we started sometimes yeah. with, you know, 16 by 16 pixels sure. being chased around by ghosts. <laughs> yep, it all started from there. And back in 1980 is when Pac-Man was released. So it's been, wow, it's been over 40 years. Pac-Man is 42 years old. Jeez, that is, that it feels so weird hearing something like that. Yeah.
basically for all of both of our lives, Pac-Man has existed. It's older than us. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Which is such a funny thing to think of, that a game is older than someone. But right. most of the arcade games are. All righty. So we're going to be closing it out tonight. We want to thank you all for watching. So in conclusion, pick up the bomb gingerly. Don't get too close to Clyde. And make sure you know your niche or titles. I think those are the three takeaways for tonight. We'll leave you with those takeaways. And we hope you have a good night. And join us next time for our next arcade challenge.